MPs have voted to extend emergency coronavirus powers in England until September, despite a large rebellion by backbench Conservative MPs against the plan. The government has refused to rule out extending the wide-ranging powers it to in October. The Health Secretary, Matt Hancock, told the Commons he expected people would continue to wear masks long after restrictions are lifted and warned cases could rise again. Plans for so-called vaccine passports were raised by the Prime Minister yesterday to allow people back into pubs and other hospitality and entertainment venues. Today, Boris Johnson said the idea might only be viable once everybody in the UK had been offered a vaccine. Here's our political editor, Laura Koonsberg. Eager to get to the bar? Forget proving your age. What about proving you've had a jab or a negative test to get a pint? The Bell and Cross near Stourbridge has already spent thousands to get ready to serve outside. I just think it's a really, really bad idea. The checks we had to do anywhere when we were open were extensive. Um, it created a huge amount of extra work, which meant an extra increase in the staff costs. Also the stress of the staff, because we were meticulous in following these instructions. Where are we going yet? Yeah. Boris Johnson paints himself a freedom lover. But regular Covid checks are being considered as the government wrestles with how to safely open the economy. It's not easy to grab on to straightforward solutions. You need to get a haircut. And you, are you booked in for April the 12th? For the pub, yes. No, for the haircut. <laughs> for the haircut. Whether haircuts or this issue, pub passports, there's a lot to plan. You've got to be careful about how you, you do this. And you might, need to, you, you, you might uh, only be able to implement a thoroughgoing uh, vaccination passport scheme, even if you wanted such a thing, in the context of, of you know, uh, when absolutely everybody had been offered... Uh, a, a vaccine. So, you know, there are, there are complexities, uh, moral complexities, ethical problems that need, it, need to be addressed. Hang on, though. This was only last month. What I don't think we will have in this country is, as it were, uh, vaccination uh, passports to allow you uh, to go to, uh, say, the pub. That view is shifting, though. This is one of Downing Street's locals. And like everywhere else around the country, it hasn't seen a punter for months. The government isn't planning to make vaccines compulsory or force you to do a test every time you leave the house. But they are looking at how pubs, restaurants, venues, football grounds or workplaces could use COVID checks to help open up and let us back in. Officials are considering if pubs and venues could stop social distancing if they carried out COVID checks, but they'd leave the decision to do so up to individual firms. It's not really for the government to abdicate its responsibility and leave it to the private sector to, to decide the rules and then take the flack for you know, what may be very unpopular decisions. With so many doors still shut, this suggestion's riled a small but noisy group of Tory MPs, already unhappy that ministers asked them to extend the government's sweeping powers. Unless you fight for freedoms every day, they end up being taken away from you. After months of denial, now indeed it will be the case that you will have to provide your vaccination bona fides when you go to the pub. We, as Conservatives, should be very careful not to constrain the private sector in how they choose what customers they have. Covid checks wouldn't be used until everyone has been offered a vaccine and won't affect grand plans to reopen outdoor venues next month. But as restrictions roll back, one thing is clear, the world won't look the same. Laura Kunzberg, BBC News, Westminster. The head of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, has said tonight that AstraZeneca must catch up on vaccine deliveries for the EU before exporting its vaccine supplies elsewhere. European leaders have been meeting this evening to discuss tightening export controls on vaccines. The French president, Emmanuel Macron, said all exports should be blocked when drug companies don't respect their contracts. From Brussels, here's our Europe editor, Katia Adler. Prague is remembering its dead. Simply. Painfully. With one of the highest COVID fatality rates in the world, the Czech Republic, like many other EU countries, is in the grip of a third wave. Vaccines are in short supply. National rollouts, like here in Belgium, in disrepute the EU's credibility on the line. 
EU leaders have been meeting remotely today to discuss how to secure the EU's vaccine supply, ensuring companies deliver jabs promised, and controversially, potentially blocking vaccine exports to vaccine-producing countries like the UK, which have an already advanced rollout. We want to make sure that Europe gets its fair share of vaccines, because we must be able to explain to our citizens that if companies export their vaccines to the whole world, it is because they are fully honoring their commitments and it does not risk security of supply in the European Union. What started as a health crisis now has political overtones here, especially after Brexit. EU leaders are under huge pressure to act. Their vote is increasingly frustrated about a lack of vaccines and fearful because of a third wave of the virus. But not all of those leaders want vaccine export controls. Tonight, the Commission is trying to persuade them otherwise. It says since December, the EU has exported 77 million jabs to wealthy countries. 20 million to the UK, I've just been told, without receiving one back in return. Intentionally provocative, perhaps, the Commission now insists Brussels was key in making the UK's vaccine effort a success. Some EU countries say they prefer never to use vaccine export controls for fear of disturbing international relations or supply chains. France is more hardline. But today, President Macron admitted the EU had made mistakes along the way. We didn't go fast enough, strong enough. It's absolutely true. We thought the vaccine would take time, but we are catching up. Not a moment too soon for Europeans, languishing in lockdown, decimating their economies. Sophie, it's a two-day summit, but proceedings have now wrapped up for the night. And what have we learnt? Well, that EU leaders have supported the Commission in wanting to expand powers over controls over vaccine exports leaving the bloc. Uh, in theory, but in practice, what we're actually hearing from a lot of member states, like the Netherlands, for example, uh, is they want to make it very difficult to actually use those controls because they want to safeguard international relations and global supply chains. Good news for the UK. The UK relies on the EU, Sophie, for the Pfizer vaccine, so it didn't want those exports blocked. And another piece of good news um, in EU-UK relations, we're being told tonight that possibly as soon as this weekend, there could be some agreement between the two sides of how to better cooperate on vaccines going forward. Katia Adler, thank you.